Hello viewers, this is episode 2 of our Royal Air Force Collie Western and Wittering Bomb Stores Exploration. For episode 1, see the link in the description box. Today we are exploring the protected magazines used to house the fissile cores and the hardened weapon stores built for the Blue Danube. Number 1321 flight was established at RAF Wittering in April 1954 as a Vickers Valiant unit to integrate the Blue Danube nuclear weapon into Royal Air Force service. Blue Danube was not engineered as a weapon equipped to withstand the rigours of service life. Specially trained engineers were required as it was a scientific experiment on a gigantic scale which needed to be re-engineered in service to fulfil the Royal Air Force requirements. Blue Danube was retired in 1962 and the bombs are now dismantled and stored at the Sellafield nuclear decommissioning site. These buildings are the protected magazines for the fissile cores which is the initiating charge to detonate the plutonium and uranium core inside the Blue Danube bomb. We'll get down into these and discover what's left behind from the Cold War era when these were constructed. We saw some similar ones to these at Royal Air Force Labra. Link in the description box. Let's check this one out first. These have got an interesting door on them. They're a taller building than what we saw in the previous episode, and they've got the road glass wall arrangements. Totally encasing them. Plastic guttering, and wooden soffits, and a flat tar roof. As we've got a GRP box here that would have that would have enclosed electrical items as we go in for so this Kingspan walled concertina door building and it's had pyroelectrics on the roof for the lighting explosion proof luminaires I don't know what these are for, but that was a pigeon. I don't know what that is. It's like a junction box for something, but I don't know what. We're moving this way. We've got a fire door. In the larger concertina door, we've got a vent up there. Up there, they look like sensors to show if the door's open or closed. Can you see that? I don't know if that's exposing. You see those viewers in the bottom centre of the screen now? They look like proximity switches that would have mated up. Similar to this, to show if the door was open or closed. So the control room that we saw in episode one, I'd know if all the doors are shut properly or not. And that's the little marshalling box for the controls of this area. You can see the blast wall is larger here. You can also see the construction method is more modern, where they've tanked it up. Let's so move along to a void area here and another weapon stores building. So they've had a big padlock there, seized up. And then they've had a small personnel entrance here into this building 48. And then it's got the big slot screws holding these massive hinges on. Look inside that one, 
Again, that's got a concrete roof. It's got felt tower on it to stop the water getting in. And it's got pyroelectrics and the explosion proof lighting. We've got another void. It's very flat though, as if they stored non non explosive items out here, such as the like the racking and things to transport the weapons or the volatile equipment that was kept in these buildings to the actual airfield which is over the road and the A47. Now this cabinet has even got a door switch on it so if you open this cabinet it would alert someone that the door switch has been operated. So you couldn't frig the controls. So the control room knew when things were happening here. There's been a small fire in here, but it hasn't got very hot. Just smoke damage. As we move to the really good bit, leaving these behind, we can see where there's been more trailer mounted areas here as I've just spotted in the centre of the screen there in episode 1 I was saying there's probably a lagoon here somewhere where they'll be able to pump large amounts of water out of it to use for firefighting and in the centre of the screen there I can see a life boy holder so that does correlate to the theory that the RAF will have had a lagoon here somewhere with large amounts of water to pump onto any one of these if there was ever a fire. Now this convenient area of the blast wall is void so we'll walk through here over the metal work that's left behind here so we go towards these. Now these are the these are the real star of the show. These are the hardened weapon stores and these are a very similar design to the ones that we saw in Germany at Royal Air Force Larbrook. That's the top. Now that is the vent and that used to be situated up there on the top of there and it's either blown off or been kicked off. No, I think we're good. Here we are. Real Cold War weapon stores. Hardened weapon stores. Looks like all the, the doors are open on those ones. They're closed on these ones. I don't know if they'll open. Not if it's been welded shut. We'll check these ones first that were open. interesting to see if they are exactly the same as the ones in Germany as if the same blueprint was taken out they look very similar we've got the areas that have been marked out for the weapons got the vent there and that's where the electrics would have come in because these would have had lights in them, but not much else. You can see the tray work on the roof there that would have been for the lights. And these would have stored, at some point in their lives, these would have stored nuclear weapons, as well as conventional ordnance. large lock there so these have been locked up there and then double padlock one two 
and these would have been guarded by armed guards. So we've got another one here. We'll try and get in the ones where the doors are closed because they might be a bit more intact. I do remember there was a vent like that at Larbro, but I think the design of these is, is slightly different. Although inside, they are of a very similar shape. And that's the top of an old telegraph pole. Just the top part. It's still got some of the telephone cable on it. Now the steps that the telegraph man would have gone up. The repairman still got explosion proof luminaires on the ceiling there. You can see those others. They're all smashed though. Someone's gone to town trying to stop them to smash them. So it's had some breaking to be honest. So. And then that's the extract grill there. quite nice to be in one of these again. So it was a couple of years ago when we went to, I think it was 20, 2020 and 2021 when we went to RF Larbrook in between all the restrictions. Shout out to Evan Lodge Yorkshire. on them. Should we see if this one works? See if the door works. See if we can get the doors open on these. Don't know if they're locked or welded. Event arrangement. What does it say? Nothing. I thought we'd have had some numbers on or something. Yeah, it looks like something slotted in there to cover it over. And was that a peg so they could peg it at different heights for different amounts of ventilation? Yeah, I'd say so. 
which is one of those. There's two of those on each one. There's one there and one there. It looks like they could peg it open or closed for various, I don't know, temperatures. So I do remember on on warships, the warships I was on, they used to have a system called Sea Dart. And they were quite a large missile. And they used to keep the Sea Dart magazine at a, at a optimum temperature and humidity all the time. Whereas I guess they did similar things with these back in the day. Now I do know the RAF have got some of these on the actual main site, on the main RAF wittering site. So that's maybe why they don't use these anymore. See if this one happens. No, nah, solid. I think they'll just simply seized up because that one isn't locked. Not if you can see in there, viewers. That looks like the old cable pit to supply the power. I was thinking. This area. It, I was thinking. It's, normally it's drainage, but there's no there's no drainage. Around here. No. So it's quite, uh, it's quite perplexed. Yeah, I think the cable pits. And then uh, there's the emergency telephone sign, which I think meant it was there. Temperature's quite nice in these. So it's quite a hot day, because it's 20 something degrees outside. But in here, it feels a lot cooler. Is that the original Mickey Mouse, or is that a different character? Yeah, I can't. I remember seeing that person. I don't think he was smoking a cigarette, but I've seen him in cartoons before. Can you tell me who he is, viewers? Because I can't remember. That looks like a Bugs Bunny takeoff. As we look at this, some electronic wiring here in this hardened weapons store. We've got the last two. We've got to check them out. Oh, last three. So there's always, I always often find there's something different in each one. Each one has got its own story to tell. And that's why I like coming to places like this to document the history behind wonderful places like this. Is that? A rabbit. Oh, you know what? That is good. That's not your rattle can rubbish. That is that is real art to me. That. That is cool. I like that. Whoever's done that, KS. I think that is well done. That is top quality. That. What do you think, viewers? And that is the vent off the top of the Harden Weapon store here. Someone's had a pizza. There's been some tar or something spilled in here. Maybe a chemical that's made the floor go black. Harry has just spotted one of the lagoons, just there, so 
just reverting to type the, the Royal Air Force build things it might look different on the outside but they've always got the same mechanical parts within them they've always got a guard room they've always got a toilet block they've always got the stores where they maintain things stores where they store things and I've never been to an RAF base that doesn't have a lagoon for firefighting and that red post there looks like it used to have I can't see what I'm pointing at but there's a red post in the centre of the screen now and that looks like it used to be one of the life boy um, containers for that lagoon there that still looks very deep and it, it looks rubber lined as if it isn't that old let's have a look just natural draft with a fire damper the fire damper's closed the actual vent is down in there on. You see that viewers, that's a vent system and that is the lead link that burns through. That burns through quite a low temperature that's jointed with solder and the solder melts at a set temperature and it drops it, it drops the uh, fire damper this is the overview of the site we've been exploring over the last two episodes so viewers thank you very much for watching this I'm Andy that's Harry thank you so much for watching please subscribe on that button there and why not watch this video next and I'll see you every Thursday at 4pm UK time bye bye for now